What's up guys, today I'm at the Desert Botanical Garden in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, I wanted to take a little bit of a rest since I spent so much energy hiking up the mountain to Weaver's Needle a couple days ago. If you wanna see that video, the card's in the top right corner. I wanted to take it easy today and come to the Botanical Garden because I wanted to test out macro photography and specifically a lens for my Sony mirrorless camera. I wanted to have that just so I can take those like smaller landscape scenes that you see so often. One of my biggest inspirations for smaller landscape scenes, especially the macro look or smaller details in nature landscape photography has always been Sarah Marino and Ron Cascarosa. And if you want their profiles are linked below in the video description. Their viewpoint and perspective on how to shoot these smaller scenes and how to photograph these little details that you often pass up as you're walking along the trail or whatever is so amazing to me. And it's, it's something that I've always struggled with as a photographer is finding these smaller scenes or smaller things to shoot in the landscape and I thought today would be a really good opportunity to come and test that out and practice that and work on that skill. You know, photography, it's like a sport. You find something that you're not great at and you practice it and you work on it to make yourself a more well-rounded photographer. And that's exactly what I wanna work on today is you know, how do you photograph things well that are smaller than those grand scenes, those grand vistas that you photograph that have those incredible foregrounds or you pack tons of features into one frame. What I want to work on today is simplifying my photography and getting it down and whittling the subject down to that's the only thing in the frame using both light, composition, framing, and aperture settings to really bring those features out, whether that's a wide aperture and you're really blurring out those backgrounds or foregrounds, or even if that's a smaller aperture and having everything in focus, but really focusing on like the intricate details of these plants themselves. And I wanted to use this botanical garden specifically because they have so many plants here that have interesting designs. Weather-wise, it's extremely sunny right now. Definitely not what you want for macro photography. We've got a little bit of wind here too, which is also something that you don't want. But you really wanna come and photograph these smaller scenes on like cloudy days and days with no wind because those clouds act as a diffuser for the entire scene. And sun creates those distracting highlights on your subject, especially when you're shooting smaller scenes. And since you're so close to your subject, any bit of wind is going to adjust that. And we're working with huge apertures. So any inundation of distance between your subject and the lens is gonna throw it out of focus. So it's gonna be a challenge today, that's for sure. Hopefully today provides some really good shoots and we can learn how to shoot macro today. literally just tons of these plants here that you could photograph. I'm probably gonna be here for a few hours, but you could literally spend a day here and not make it out of one section of this place. So just walking along, I found these really cool features, really small scenes that I could shoot. One of them is these wildflowers that are kind of just, I guess they've just been watered and they're just laying down flat. You have this really cool shot, this visualization of these wildflowers laying down and all their stems are kind of laying on their side leading up to them. You have like green stems on one side and purple and yellow flowers on the opposite side. Really cool scene to see. And then another thing that caught my eye was this single limb and there were two wildflowers on the end of it. And there's just this spotlight of light just shining on them through the, there's dappled light through the trees that's right here. And I kind of just leaned my tripod over as far as it would go. And I wanted to capture this and just show like how difficult a little bit of wind can adjust when you're this close and you're shooting with an aperture of 2.8 or wider. 
it just throws that in and out of focus as much as possible. Hopefully I got a good shot of it, but it's just, it's really hard and you gotta be really patient when you're dealing with this kind of photography because every little minute swing in distance from your lens is gonna throw the focus out. So you really have to be patient and wait for that exact moment and then just smash the shutter and hope that you get a good shot. So I've made the initial loop of the park and I really think it's time now to start taking these photos and getting some really good geometric designs of these small little scenes of cacti. I've come back to my favorite spot that I saw in my first initial loop and I've come back to some really cool geometric design cacti right here and it's got some really good detail like some greens, got a little bit of pink detail, some whites and I definitely say that in this trip alone I've contorted my tripod into the most unique situations here, I mean right now this is what I'm dealing with and I'm just taking pictures uh, of these cacti right here and the goal here is to frame up using balance in the frame of like one predominant cacti on either side and I'm shooting it 1 15th of a second f8 ISO 100 getting enough detail throughout to get some highlights on top and then still have it in focus on the bottom where you have those deep rich blacks where you can bring out tons and tons of contrast in these cacti which is what I want because I'm dealing with designs right now instead of an overall scene. Alright so these right here are actually what I really wanted to come here and shoot. These and a, another kind of cacti that I have no idea what the name is that I wanted to find here but I haven't found yet. But these are like the perfect geometric designs that I wanted to shoot and they have so much depth. They're so deep that you can get like a lot of the light on the outside and get really really dark on the inside so you have so much contrast going on and I'm actually using there's a plaque right back here that's acting as my diffuser so I just found one that was hidden by this sign right here and used it as my diffuser and covered up um, that little bit of sunlight coming in for this one right here and I mean it's just it's pristine it's geometric it's perfect, it's exactly what I wanted to shoot. Desert landscapes and desert vegetation. This, this one right here is exactly what I thought about when I wanted to come out and shoot something like this in this area specifically. But now what I really wanna find is a cactus with a blooming flower on top to really like, I think that'll complete my day here of what I wanna shoot and, and what I wanna grab from this spot. Alright, so that didn't take long to find at all. I literally turned the corner 30 seconds later, came across a great cactus flower that was in bloom right on top of the cactus and I had to go ahead and shoot it and then tell you about how I did it just because the light was kind of bouncing around in the trees and I had this perfect stream of shadow casting across the flower. So I had to take full advantage of that. But basically how you do it, with, with a shot like that, I want everything in focus from front to back. So I went ahead and set up my settings to one tenth of a second F8 ISO 100. And even though you're shooting at F8, some things in the very front and the foreground and some things in the background are gonna be slightly out of focus because you're still using a macro lens. So what you have to do is focus stack. So you get that front 
foreground area, you focus to that area on the back of your LCD screen, panning around on the screen to see everything that's in focus in the bottom foreground area, then take the shot, then readjust your focus to take like the next area. So the next area back is some of the cactus branches that are coming off. Next area back is the flower itself. Next area back is the cactus behind the flower. And it's like you're slicing the photo into these layers of different focal depths. So you're shooting like four or five different focal depths and then you stack all those and you stack that focus together in Photoshop to make everything throughout the entire frame in focus. So really happy with what I got with this particular photograph of here. I'll just show it to you real quick. That flower right there. I mean, that is solid. You have greens, you have oranges, you have reds, and then you have the yellow flower itself right there that you're trying to shoot and frame up perfectly. I know I said that I thought I was done and I saw these two cacti right here and I wanted to try like an abstract shot really blurring out a bunch of the needles and I wanted a cactus that had a ton of needles covering it because when I blur it out I want these needles I want you to still be able to see them but I don't want them to be in focus like I want them to be really soft focus and barely out of focus so you can still see them but then I also wanted the background to be the same color. So to do that, you have to get really low to the ground and contort yourself into like the most awkward position ever, especially when people are walking around. But you get down low and you photograph cacti needles like this and blur them out slightly so that the background is completely yellow. The background is going to be completely blurred out. But with this right here is definitely like still soft focus so you can still see the needles but it's going to be really cool to see this abstract shot come together because this like i talked about sarah and ron's photography their macro style this is one of the reasons that i started following them so much is because they do this a lot but i wanted to try it out for myself because i've never been able to do it before and i think this is the shot that's gonna do it. All right, remember when I said I was contorting my tripod into the most awkward situations ever today? Well, I think this one probably takes the cake. I've got my tripod neck fully extended right there. I'm trying to get way up close on this cactus bloom with a green background. I'm going to use a wide aperture to blur out that background to pair these red and green colors together for complementary colors. And right now, the only way I can actually do that is to straddle this bench hold this tripod leg against this wall using my own leg and then having the my right leg over the other two tripod legs and cramping my leg down on those so they stay still so that i can get this shot literally the most awkward straddling position ever that i've done with photography for sure but i think it's going to be a good shot shooting this one with an aperture of f2.8 i'm probably going to go like 1 one hundredth of a second and iso 400 because the light's getting a little darker increase that iso some to bring in some more light and hopefully this one turns out well because it's really uncomfortable to sit like this and um yeah we've gotten some good photos so far though today and uh, really excited about how this lens is doing and and what we've done here just like three or four hours in the botanical garden 
really fun way to shoot, really cool shoot to uh, end the Arizona trip up on. All right, so while we still have the last little bit of light hanging around, let me just give you my final thoughts on what we just did. Amazing way to change up the pace. If, if I were a photographer trying something new, I would go to a place and solely focus on that one thing, whether that be black and white photography, macro photography like we did today, or landscape photography or adventure photography, whatever it is, Go to a location and just do that one thing for three or four hours and it's amazing how much you learn just from trial and error and doing different things with the gear that you have and trying different techniques on whatever subject you're shooting and, and macro specifically, just learning the amount that I did going out and shooting with a macro lens in different styles, trying to copy different techniques, but then create my own with my own style was an amazing experience. And, and I highly encourage all photographers to do that. It was like, I mean, I ran out of battery. I probably could have shot more photographs, but I ran out of battery and, and just didn't have the ability to do that. But just an overall, great learning experience and overall great day here shooting and, and experiencing all that this place had to offer with desert vegetation, desert wildflowers, cacti. It was just a remarkable, a remarkable day shooting. I can't say it enough. Really, I highly recommend this place for anybody in the Arizona area. Come to this place and shoot. If you're into macro, you're gonna love it. If you're not into macro, try it out, try a different technique for landscapes. That is your smaller landscape scenes, shooting these intricate designs with some small landscape scenes. And I know, I, let me just dispel this before we go. I know a lot of people say like, you can't go to a botanical garden because it's not like rugged, it's not reality, it's not in the wild, you're not shooting it. I, I mean, I'm debunking that right now because I mean, this stuff is staged. It's a great practice setting, but as well, you can get some incredible shots of vegetation, landscape, just in this little area. Yeah, I'm not hiking four miles out, but it's also kind of nice to take a break from hiking every once in a while. So even if you think like it's not cool enough to come shoot at a botanical garden, try it out. I'm, I'm pretty sure your mind will change right after it.